Having extraordinary talent, Taylor Swift is one of the most commercially successful artists in the history of music. Not only does she have a beautiful voice and a charming appearance, but Taylor is also a skilled songwriter. It's no wonder that her albums have sold in enormous numbers, often dominating the charts. Taylor Swift has sold approximately 114 million copies of her albums, including physical formats like CDs, DVDs, and vinyl, with 37.3 million in the United States and 3.34 million in the United Kingdom. She also recently made history as the first female artist on Spotify to reach 100 million monthly listeners. However, behind all these achievements, Taylor Swift surprisingly decided to re-record some of her albums, such as Fearless and 1989, which were released on October 27, 2023. What exactly led Taylor Swift to re-record some of her albums? The answer is that the 12-time Grammy Award winner chose to re-record all her albums in response to copyright ownership issues. Big Machine Label Group, which previously worked with Swift on her first six albums since 2006, was sold to a private equity group called Ithaca Holdings, led by the influential music manager Scooter Braun. With ownership of the master recordings of six of Swift's albums, Braun, with his business acumen, sold the ownership rights to Taylor Swift's master recordings to another company named Shamrock Holdings in 2019, reportedly for $300 million. From a business perspective, Brown's actions were indeed clever. As ownership of Swift's master recordings generates income every time the songs are played or purchased. However, from a personal standpoint, especially for Taylor Swift herself, this became a controversial issue. Swift claimed that Braun, who also manages renowned artists like Kanye West and Justin Bieber, had engaged in bullying behavior towards her. Because of this, Swift openly criticized the sale and vowed to re-record her first six albums. This time, the master recordings would be under her full control. With this move, any listeners who still enjoy the original versions of Taylor Swift's early songs would continue to provide financial support to Scooter Braun. Taylor Swift began the project of re-recording her albums in 2019 under the title Taylor Version and made her debut re-recorded album release in April 2021. During the re-recording process, she also released new albums, namely Folklore and Evermore in 2020. The album Fearless, Taylor's Version, was the first to be released in 2021, featuring two new songs titled Mr. Perfectly Fine and Today Was a Fairy Tale both with a romantic comedy theme. Next, she released Red, Taylor's version, in November 2021, including an extended version of the song All Too Well, called All Too Well, 10-minute version, which earned her a Best Music Video Grammy Award in 2023. In July 2023, she released Speak Now, Taylor's version. Many fans were surprised when she changed the lyrics in the song Better Than Revenge, Taylor's version. From the controversial line, She's better known for the things that she does on the mattress, to a new, non-vulgar line. He was a moth to the flame, she was holding the matches. Furthermore, this album featured collaborations with Paramore's vocalist Haley Williams on the song Castles Crumbling and Fall Out Boy on Electric Touch. It also included four From the Vault songs that had never been released before, titled Foolish One, Timeless, When Emma Falls in Love, and I Can See You. Consequently, Speak Now, Taylor's version, became the first album with the most songs by a female artist in history. Most recently, Taylor Swift just released 1989, Taylor's version, on October 27th. Taylor herself stated that re-recording the album 1989 is her favorite, featuring five From the Vault songs. So, Swifties, which Taylor version album is your favorite? <laughs>